Hello everyone, how are you? Here you give me the match results for Monday Night Raw for June the 13th, 2022. Raw had nine matches. A lot of them suck crap. For instance, MVP took on Cedric Alexander one-on-one -on -one with almost in his corner. Bow rang. Cedric had a nice face buster. Then MVP ran at him. Cedric drop kicked one of his legs out from under him. Then almost caused a distraction for 30 seconds of the match. Without MVP to hit a clothesline. Then shortly after that, he pinned him for the one-two free. So MVP won. Like, what the heck kind of garbage is that? Like, Cedric Alexander is an amazing talent. MVP is pretty good, too. Like, those guys go, like, 10 minutes. But, no, there's over in a few, like, a minute or two, if you're lucky. Um, and where the hell is Sheldon Benjamin, folks? Like, on Twitter, he announced on Twitter himself that I am not injured. I'm ready to go. Just, they don't have no plans for me. So, that's not a good sign right there. I think you're going to see Shelton being released soon. It's going to be a shame that's other tag team broken up. The way WWE's going, there ain't hell no point having the tag team titles if we ain't going to have no tag teams to face off against them. Jimmy Uso took on Montez for the Street Profits one-on-one -on -one with Jay and Daniel Dawkins at ringside. I refuse to watch this match because I'm sick and tired of seeing the Usos wrestle Monday night and Friday night the same week. I'm sick of it. They probably do the same thing. They probably wrestle on live events too. Like four or five times a week. I'm sick of it. So as right now, if the Usos are wrestling on Monday Night Raw in SmackDown, I'm not watching it. Um, so I read online that Jimmy Uso won the match when Montez Ford went off the top rope for the frog splash and Jimmy got his knees up and pinned him. Um Tommaso Ciampa took on Matt Riddle one on one. Um there was no clarification of why. They didn't explain no reason whatsoever why Tommaso Ciampa attacked Matt Riddle last week. Um, Paul Heyman said that to Matt Riddle that he had a mystery appointment for him. Riddle was expecting Jay Uso because he never faced and never, you know, competed yet on Monday Night Raw there Monday night. But no, it was Tomas Chimpa. Bell rang. Riddle quickly applied the arm bar submission hold. Tomas Chimpa grabbed a hold of the ropes. Riddle refused to let go of it. He had to before he got disqualified. So he let go of it. Then uh, he went for the bro Derek. Tomas Chamber countered that into an inverted takedown. Then he hauled off, stomped on his foot, and they DDT'd him. Hit the running knee to the face. Tomas Chamber went for the fairy tale in him. Riddle countered it. RKO match over. Word quick match. Nothing very exciting happened there, folks. Chad Gable with Otis ringside took on Mustafa Ali. I'm like, oh, this is going to be one hell of a match, right? Bow rang. They just died tearing into each other. Gable did awesome. Like, he'll hold on to Mustafa Ali, chop him down, pull him back up. Chop him down again. Did that three times in a row. Hit a nice German Super X into a cup bridge pin maneuver. Um, Mustafa Ali kicked out. And Mustafa Ali ran at Chad Gable in the corner. Gable moved out of the way. Mustafa Ali not hit himself so hard. That's how much speed he had going. He hit himself so hard into the middle turnbuckle. He was stunned. He was out of it. Um, Ali quickly hit... Uh, Tornado DDT off the top rope. Went for the 450 splash. Otis caused a distraction. Allowed Chad Gable to win the match. Out of where he short match. And that match should have went like 10 minutes. That would one hell of a match between the two. But nope, ended within a couple minutes. Now on the matches on Raw that are worth watching, folks. Ver Mahal took on Rey Mysterio. This was your main event match for the show. Like the last match they put on TV. Veer sent Ray Mysterio so hard to the turnbuckles. Ray just bounced like a pinball in a pinball machine. That looked painful. Um, Ray had a nice hurricanrana on Veer, knocking him into the corner. Then Flair, um, Veer Mahal caught him and just drove his knee right into Ray's guts. Then um, he tossed Ray Mysterio outside the ring. Then he went outside the ring and he just looked at Dominic. Like, hey, you know what? For the fun of it, I was going to close line the holy hell out of you over the barricade. Um, he got back in the ring. Um, Mysterio went for the 619. Veer countered it into a turtle whirl. Knee to the, underneath the chin maneuver. Then he quickly put on the camel clutch. Modified camel clutch for the submission win. So Veer Mahal, yet again, picked up a win. Um, we're all ready to go, Veer Mahal. I hope you have Money in the Bank, man. I'll love to see that guy in Money in the Bank ladder match. Oh, so. We have. A rematch from last week. Becky Lynch took on Dana Brooke for the 24-7 title. But this is why I thought, this is why I really enjoyed about this. Becky Lynch 
attacked Dana before the bell rang, beat the shit right out of her. Like, like Sting, old cold Steve Austin stumps in the corner, just stumped her dry. Then she uh, threw Dana face first to the announce table. Now, this part was bad, though. She stuck her head into like, the gap of the announce table and announces on, then she hauled off and kicked it. Nowhere is near where she put Dana's head, by the way. Then she just hauled off and smoked her. Dana went down hard. And then Oscar made the save. And then Oscar missed a back spinning back fist. That was funny. And then Becky attacked her. They brawled. So um, Becky retreated up the ramp. And Becky said that the 24 7 title is belief her, which is right. She is amazing talent. She does not deserve to be in news like that to face him for Dana for the 24 7 title. So next week on Raw, Oscar versus Becky Lynch. The winner goes on in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Only one can go. That's going to be intriguing because I thought for sure both women will qualify. But nope, we're going to have one of them qualify. So who's it going to be, Becky or Oscar? That's going to be one hell of a match. I just wish they would explain why Oscar's attacked Becky and cost her the match last week. I, I don't get why she did that. Um, speaking of Money in the Bank, we have Money in the Bank qualifying matches. Piper Niven and Nikki Cross took on Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan. A tag team Money in the Bank qualifying match. This is a very good match, folks. Check this match out. Nikki, finally, they decided, well, she's a heel now. A super villain, I guess you can call her. So the blue gold tights of her being a good person. Three months overdue. They should have done this three months ago. They finally changed their attire to black and gold, which makes better sense. Anyways, Piper Niven um, swatted Alexa Bliss away, just freaking threw her away halfway across the ring, then ran out and hit the nice swanton drop on her. Tagged out, Nikki got in, applied a headlock. Um, Alexa finally got free with a jawbreaker, tagged out. Liv and Piper Niven faced off. Liv um, did hauled off and started kicking at one of Piper Niven's legs. Then hit a nice cold breaker, stunned her, but Niven still stood the ground, so... Then Moore got up at the top rope. Missile draw kick knocked her down finally. Tagged out. Nikki tagged in. Um, Nikki and Niven grabbed a hold of Alexa Bliss. They had a nice double team sidewalk slam neck breaker combo. That was nicely done. Um, almost won the match, but Liv made the save in the nick of time. Then as Liv Morgan and Pipe Niven are fighting outside the ring, Alexa Bliss DDT Nikki in the ring for the 1 2 3. Way to go, Nick, Alexa Bliss. You're 5 and all. She's 5 and all now since we turn in. From her marriage. And I'm really excited that her and Liv and the Money in the Bank ladder match. Until I read online. And Charlotte Flair is coming back already folks. From her honeymoon. And in case you don't know. She married Andrade Cien Almas. Who was former superstar at WWE. Which I really loved. Enjoyed him his matches. Now he's on AEW. And they're hardly doing nothing with the guy. Like they're trying to build him up. But. He should not have to be built up. That guy's like main event star power right there already. So, Shawnette's coming back, which means Shawnette Flair will win Money in the Bank, which I don't want to see. A lot of people don't want to see it. And then she'll win the SmackDown Wild Women's title, hold that title hostage like she does. I, I don't get me wrong. Shawnette Flair is an amazing, great talent performer in the ring. But her ego... Gets the better of her. That and she constantly has to be in title matches. Like she could feud with a lot of women that roster. That don't have to involve around the title. Just saying. Um, the last two matches to talk about. A must see matches as well. Kevin Owens and Elias squared off. As soon as that bell rung. Owens just floored Elias with a nice serpent kick. Cannonball in the corner. Top row frog splash. That free move combo just happened just like that. Elias kicked out. That was impressive. Elias sent um, Owens into the barricade. Had a nice spine buster for a two count. Elias went up on the top rope. Owens um, rolled outside the ring. So Elias said, you know what? I'm just going to go outside the ring and beat you up. He delivered the attitude adjustment that John Cena does and R-Truth. Delivered that on the steel freaking steps. That looked nasty. Owens had a frog splash off the ring apron to get the momentum back. Awesome match, folks. Like I said, check this match out. Back and forth action. They were just going at each other. They exchanged blows until Elias started getting the better of it. Elias hit the stinger splash in the corner. Blocked a stunner. Hit the jump up knee underneath the chin. Stunned Owens. 
you could hear the impact of that jump up knee. You could hear the impact. That was nah, that was awesome. Um, they fought outside the ring gate. Elias went with the stinger splash. Owens moved out of the way, so Elias hit the ring post. Um, they were fighting outside of the ring, and um, Elias rolled back the ring, and Kevin Owens started yelling. They announced like, "That's Elias, not Ezekiel," and he got counted out. Then Owens threw a fit because he got counted out, and announced next week. Elias is going to be performing his concert. So, here is he, Elias is going to perform a double duty as Elias and his alter ego Ezekiel. Or, the rumor is going on the rumormail.v.com, Rashland Sites of Green, which would be interesting, is Damian Sandow is going to come back and play Elias' character. He could do it. Because he did great. Like, with the stunt double thing with Miz. So, I think he could pull off being Elias. Last match to talk about. Seth freaking Rollins took on the phenomenal AJ Styles and a Money in the Bank qualifying match. This match was past awesome. It turned into phenomenal from the get-go. This match should have been your main event match, but it wasn't. That's the only downfall of it. Uh, before they faced off backstage, AJ Styles approached Seth Rollins and just haymakered him. He's like, that was for Cody. That was nice. Back in the ring, AJ floored him a nice drop kick to the face that drove him so hard back first into the barricade. Seth was hurt. They hit the phenomenal form on the outside. Seth, after a while, got some momentum going. Um, hit a nice throat chop. Then he did his famous dive through the ropes. He did so much momentum going into that and speed that AJ bounced onto the announce team and rolled over. That's how much speed and momentum Seth had going through the ropes. Seth super kicked AJ. Um, AJ quickly had a running clothesline in the corner. It was so even, he back and forth magic. Nobody could keep the offense going at all. Um, Seth um, went through the buckle bomb. AJ countered that and. Um, and applied the calf crusher. Seth Rollins grabbed hold of AJ and just uh, slammed the back of his head down on the mat apron. AJ Styles refused to let go of the calf crusher. Then Seth grabbed the bottom rope so the referee called for a rope break. Um, Seth blocked a peg leg kick. AJ Styles quickly hit him with one anyways. Um, AJ went for the phenomenal form off the rope. Seth Rollins caught him with a super kick. Then hit the ripcord knee. The top row frog splash and AJ kicked out. AJ went for the Styles Clash and Seth Rollins countered that and finally hit the buckle bomb in the corner. Um, again, AJ went for the Styles Clash and Seth countered that a second time and won the match by pinfall. One, two, three with a small package. So there you have it, folks. Seth Rollins is in Money in the Bank now. He's the first official man to enter the Money in the Bank. Match. Um, I noticed the winner are having seven win them, and the man's gonna be eight man ladder match. The winner are gonna be seven man ladder match, seven warm ladder match. Sorry. So I want to know in the comments below who you want to see win Money in the Bank this year, who you don't want to see win it. I don't want to see Shot or Brock Lesnar. That's the only two people I don't want to see win it. There you go, folks. Definitely check out AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens versus Elias. Van Mahal versus Rey Mysterio in the Divas tag match with Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Piper Niven, and Nikki Cross. The other matches, you didn't miss nothing, folks. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.